Welcome back to First Things First. Coach Mangini is with us. Coach, we haven't seen you in a while. Yellow sun, you left us for oh, I know. I need a little time warmer a pastures. All the wear and tear Nick's put on me. Right, well, yeah, I hear that. And the, but the vacation must have done you well because for the first time in my life this weekend, I'm not shockingly playing poker, I look down at my phone and I say, who's this text from? Coach Mangini. It was great to expand our relationship off the air. Cool. I felt great well, about now, that. Well, now that I know that we're sharing this, <laughs> our relationship has contracted. Let's talk more about your relationship with Nick. Oh, uh, good to see you, Kyle. Uh No, let's talk about the Vikings. I got, I honestly got a little bit jealous because I was like, hold on a second. Scroll, 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 scroll. Uh, let's talk about the Vikings, their new quarterback. Minnesota finished 13-3 and last year. They came a game shy of the Super Bowl. They didn't have much roster turnover, and they signed arguably the best free agent quarterback in Kirk Cousins. Despite this, head coach Mike Zimmer said it is not Super Bowl or bust for the Vikings this season. But coach, could anything shy of a Super Bowl win be considered a success for the Vikings? It's going to be hard for anything shy of a Super Bowl win to be considered successful. And it depends on who, who you're talking to. I'm sure if you're the owner and you have a new stadium and you have a new practice facility and you just can uh, committed $84 million in guaranteed money in an unprecedented contract and you're coming off uh, a really good run, the idea of, of taking a step back and not taking a step forward, I'm sure would be disappointing to him. And I've heard Mike talk and I've heard Rick Spielman talk and they're trying to manage expectations, but you, you can't manage it at this point. It, it's, it's too far gone. So, uh, for them to take a step back, I think it would be really, really disappointing. Yeah, as a former Viking, you know what we want um, Kirk Cousins to do? We want him to uphold the tradition of either losing a Super Bowl or getting us just close enough to break our heart. Yeah, that's what we signed up for with all those guarantees. And yeah, I think it's very important. Like, what is the state of the organization? Like, the organization is winning every other place except maximizing the type of personnel that they have now. Now, is the coach... Is the general manager, are they doing the right things because they have to manage it on a day-to-day -day basis? Yes. But when I see Coach Zim, when I bump into him, he, he, he's going to look at me. I know he's got Super Bowl aspirations. He knows I got Super Bowl aspirations. He knows the fan base has those aspirations and the ownership. Now, how they manage it day-to-day, -day, they're going about it the right way. And they don't want to put too much pressure on Kurt. Cousins, because everyone else still have they have to do their job, and a lot of times, even when Denver, when they went out and got Peyton Manning, they were trying to you know temper the expectations you know from the beginning because Peyton hadn't played. But privately, as an organization, you know it's Super Bowl or bust. That's why you take those type of chances, and that's why you give him those types of guarantees. You give him the assurance because you think you've upgraded your quarterback. If I tell you you're going to upgrade your quarterback position, then you would say, yes, the Super Bowl, that would be a realistic goal for the Minnesota Vikings. The way they've played, not only last year, but the last three years, right. absent of the horrific injuries that they've suffered. Before I give my answer, I want to ask you a follow-up question on this. How do you think, do you think at all the way Kirk Cousins conducted his free agency, I think there was a, he shot a movie or a documentary about it, the guaranteed, the, the fully guaranteed contract, the tour that, that he took, does that at all help set some of the expectations, even if they're realistic expectations, that go along with what the general public, take Mike Zimmer out of it, are saying, yeah, the Vikings game away from the Super Bowl last year, they got this star quarterback. How much does the way Kirk Cousins has done things affect expectations, fairly or otherwise? Yeah, I, I look, I didn't love it. I didn't love the idea of it, of it having a documentary crew following him. And even going to Minnesota, he was there for, what, two days before he signed the contract, and, and there's... I, I haven't been in that position, so it's hard to judge someone else for, for the way that they're doing things. And you get a lot of advice during the process about maximizing your brand and, th and things like that. So maybe that played into it. You would, I, from my perspective, I would have loved it to have been much more low-key and much more business-like and much more to the point. The, the reason that I, I wrote something down when you said Peyton Manning in Denver and the reason that I don't think it's Super Bowl or bust is because purely the randomness of an NFL season and the randomness of the NFL playoffs. Year one in Denver, how did that season end for Peyton Manning? A team that could have won the Super Bowl. Raheem Moore blows a coverage. Jacoby Jones.
goes over the top, and they end up losing a game to Baltimore. I think they lost in overtime, a game that it looked like they had won. Year two, they set every record imaginable offensively, and then they run into a buzzsaw in the Super Bowl in the Seattle Seahawks. Like, that, you can have everything set up perfectly and still not win the Super Bowl. I look at the final four teams from last year. I mean, how, could Jacksonville have won? Absolutely. If Danny Amendola doesn't get that left foot down, like Jacksonville is in the Super Bowl most likely. Could Minnesota have won? Man, I know they got blown out in the NFC Championship game. It felt to me like being in that stadium, CC, that game turned on the Kirk, on the Case Keenum pick six. And there's, so I is, just, is the larger point just that the NFC is just going to be competitive this year? So to say any team is Super Bowl a bust would be hard to do. Yeah, look, you, you can't predict how it's going to go. He could get hurt the first week of the season. A any Anything can happen. I, I totally get that. But in, there's going to be expectations at the start of the season when you add a piece like that come to a team with, with what they've done already with that coaching staff, with, with the way the organization is set up, with the things that they're doing in terms of the infrastructure, the stadium, the new practice facility. Like, I get it. And I'm a big believer that anything can happen any given season. But they've, they've built up this expectation, and, and Kirk has has fueled that fire. Yeah, every team is trying to get better. Why wouldn't they try to get better at quarterback? So you look at all the teams from last, you said talk about the teams, the Final Four. All those teams, you know the reason why they were in the Final Four? It's because their team went out and got better than they were the previous year. New England was coming off a Super Bowl victory, weren't they? Yeah. They were more active in free agency and trades than any other year I remember the New England Patriots. They were trying to get better. That's exactly what the Vikings are doing. The Vikings are doing exactly what they should be doing. They're looking at every position. Where can there be a deficiency? Where can we get better? How can I beat all these other quarterbacks that they have in the NFC? Let me go get me another quarterback who has a resume, who can throw for 4,000 yards in the season, and that not be considered some amazing year. So they upgraded the position. They should be a Super Bowl contender for the duration of his contract. And think about the expectations that New England had going into last season. Everybody talked about how they won the won the off season. Yep. The incredible things they did. The fact that this could be the year they go undefeated and win the Super Bowl, and then they start out slow. They have the problems defensively, and it was like the the sky is falling. And then that's the problem with expectations. You want to go into a season and and be able to manage that as much as possible because you could easily go through some growing pains with a new quarterback and a new offensive coordinator, and then everybody looks around and says. Wait a second, this isn't what we signed up for. You said manage expectations, but you sat here a couple minutes ago and said, yeah, it's Super Bowl or bust for, for this team. I mean, no, those are expectations. No, I, I think that, that externally, that's exactly what it's going to be. And yes. I'm sure from an ownership perspective, that's, when you do the things that you do, there are expectations. When you put out that kind of money, when you sign an unprecedented, guaranteed contract, when you build a new stadium, when you have a new practice facility, when you commit to... to uh, the GM and the and the head coach in terms of the right. things when that you have the type of roster for, they have, right? When you, you have the type of the guys in free agency, like they 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 retained almost everyone of note. When I was at the Jets, we had come off a four and twelve year, and we picked up Brett Favre, and we picked up a bunch of other free agents, and that's coming off a a down season, and the expectations were extremely high because we had gone out and spent money in free agency. This is this is significantly more than we spent at that point. And arguably, you know, as high profile a guy as, as Brett was at the time. All right, Coach, stick around. Coming up, how will the Rams deal with their new locker room filled with big personalities? That's next on First Things First.